Hello and welcome to Tutorial Tuesdays, Episode 5. Have you ever wanted to procedurally texture a candy cane in Blender? I haven't, but if you want to know how anyway, keep watching. This is sort of the result that we're going for, something similar to this. What you're going to learn how to do in this tutorial is procedural texture basics or using random procedural textures to do something similar to this. So let's get started. Step 1 is going to be, oh I need my screencast keys on so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so step one is going to be to create the texture. Yes, we're going to create the texture before we even create the candy cane. So let's hop right into our node editor. And we're going to switch to Cycles Rendering Engine because Blender Internal is going to be outdated sooner or later. So our texture, we need lights on it just so we can see what is going on and I like to use area lights or in this case geometry lights because they aren't coming from an infinitesimally small point they are more realistic so let's go ahead and let this render uh, we can turn up our lighting to maybe 25 yeah it'll be pretty good so for our texture we are going to need to UV unwrap our guy so we're gonna go ahead and go into edit mode select everything and hit U unwrap this will unwrap it into a perfect square over the entire UV area. And then we can start texturing. So go ahead and leave this in rendered mode if your processor is fast enough. If not, don't worry about it. You're just going to have to spend more time getting yours to look good. So we're going to create a new material. You can do that by clicking that new button. And the texture we're going to use I originally wanted to use a gradient texture when I started doing this, but you can't tile that. So instead, we are going to be using a brick texture. Yes, the brick texture, not only useful for bricks. So we're going to plug that into the factor, and you'll notice the bricks are black and the mortar is white, which is cool. That means the bricks are going to be our red and our white is going to be our white. Imagine that, white being white. So we want a texture coordinate, input texture coordinate to be UV, and then we are going to want to start playing with our brick settings because we don't want bricks, we want stripes. So how do you get stripes doing this? We up the brick width by a lot until we have stripes like so. And then you'll notice that we still have this little white area over there on the edge and we want to get rid of that. So to get rid of that we're going to put in texture mapping and just offset this guy a little bit to the left. Apparently going up puts it off to the left. So now we have these stripes. Very cool. And what we're going to do past that is create more brick textures because if you look at candy canes, let's go ahead and open up my reference image here, UV image editor. I'm going to go ahead and save this as candy cane, hey, candy cane underscore tutorial underscore zero zero one. Awesome. And then image, open image. We are going to go to reference. And I just found this on Google Images, which is probably not that legal. But I'm not using it for commercial purposes or anything, so hopefully I don't get sued. Anyway, you'll notice on candy canes that they have multiple sizes of stripes. In my image, I had three stripes, thick and two thin. So we'll do something similar to that. So our big, our main stripes, we don't want to be that thick. So let's go ahead and do it like this. And we can also go ahead and put the scale down to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to make them even bigger. So the mortar size is going to be our white and the red is going to be our black. So we want the white to be thicker than the black. Very cool. So that already gives us prism stripes. Neato. Then we can create another brick texture and we're going to need more UV coordinates like so. And then we can make these even thinner, so thicker mortar equals thinner red stripes. And then we can offset this using the location on the vector mapping. We want to offset it on the Y. So we will keep clicking this until we... I might have made the mortar too big. Let's just keep sliding this. Okay, yeah, I think I made the mortar too big. So let's go ahead and... Oh, no, we're not even looking at this texture. Wow mind blank. So we actually want to go ahead and mix these like so, the factors, and we're going to multiply them together by a factor of one. And what that allows us to do is take 
these black stripes and mix them with those black stripes and the white will be ignored because it is basic pixel math. Black is zero, white is one. One times zero multiplication equals zero. So the black will be black and one times one equals white, which is going to stay white. And that is how multiplication works, especially in pixel math. So now we can offset our stripes by just a little bit. Let's offset our stripes. Yeah, yeah. Something like 1, 1.2. Huh. I'm just going to slide it around. Okay, there. We're finally seeing our stripes. Now we want these stripes to be even smaller. Something like that. And now we are getting our neat candy cane stripes. Then we can do the exact same thing. Duplicate our small stripes like so. Make another multiply node. Mix it in. And offset these ones by even more. So we're just going to slide it until it looks cool. Let's try 1.5. That didn't do anything. 1.75. 309. No, that's not even how that song goes. So offsetting it just a little bit seems to offset it a lot. So 1.7. And then 1.701. 1 1.702. 1 I'm just sort of winging it here. 1.73 seems okay yeah so the ones are very significant and then I think we can make this stripe even thinner just to give us something cool but let's go ahead and play with the offset on this guy too 1.719 1.717 yeah I think that's a little bit close to what we want 1.25 should be pretty good and then we can up the mortar size to make these even thinner so now we have a complex stripe pattern. How do we make them red? Since we're using the factor, it's only going to give us black and white from the brick textures. So how we make it red then is with a color ramp under converter. Then we can make you red, like so, with no blue in it. Okay, cool. We almost have our candy cane texture. Now we just need to rotate it. And how we approach that is right here, the Z rotation. Let's put it up to maybe 45. Yeah, that's pretty good. 45 will work, maybe 35, just because we don't want it to be super rotated. And we have to put the same rotation in every stripe, like so. And now we have a candy cane texture. But notice how these are starting to be bricks again, rather than stripes. Since this represents our entire UV area, we want to offset this again on the x-axis. So let's go ahead and offset this some more on all of these. So 0.4 seems to do it for me like so and that will give us our perfect candy cane texture so now we're going to get into modeling the candy cane we'll put him off there to the side the easiest way to model a candy cane is going to be with a bezier curve and how we do that is take this rotate it up rotate u w subdivide move this guy up scale him up we want him to be on the top here scale z zero and just start moving stuff around and subdividing until it looks good. We want these to be perfectly straight. And something like, oh, that's an awful looking cane. We uh, To get a perfect arc at the top, these two widths on the handles need to be exactly the same because that will make it nice and curved, exactly how we want. And then these should be the same too. So, Something like that ought to give us a neat candy cane. But Chris, this is just a line. Why is it not a cane? Well, you can approach that through the curves menu right here. We can change the fill to full. Also, we want to make sure that this is straight. So scale Y zero. So it'll scale it to zero on the Y axis. Okay, now we have a cane shaped line. So then we can bevel it by changing this to full. By default, it's at half. And then we can up the bevel depth. And wow, it's looking like a candy cane. That is pretty cool. And notice there are no caps. There is a way to add caps. I actually modeled it differently when I was setting up my candy cane. I did it not nearly as easily as this, but we can make the caps custom ourselves. But right now our candy cane is not horribly smooth. And that is actually quite all right because when we use the subsurf modifier later, it will become smoother.
So let's go ahead and start lowering the resolution until we get just what we need because then the sub subdivision surface modifier will take the place of the rest. Then we can duplicate this in case we need it later, shove it on a trash layer, and then Alt-C to convert it into mesh. So now we have our mesh candy cane. Very cool. And we can extrude Alt-M at center, just like so. And move it down like that. Actually, probably don't even need to do that. We can probably just take these since it's already a quad and hit F to make it a face. And then we can add a subdivision surface modifier to start smoothing this guy out. I'm not actually sure why that is not round. Because it should be round. There's no creasing. This should, by all definitions of Blender, be round. Unless we have, okay, we have multiple vertices here from the thing. So we can actually take these and edge slide them up. And edge slide everything we want, sort of even-ish edges. And that gives us a candy cane that we can work with. And we can hit Alt-S if we want to make it a little bit thicker. That will scale it on the normals like so. So there we have our candy cane object. Now we just need to unwrap it. And the reason I chose such a low subdivision on this guy is because it will make unwrapping it much easier. So we will mark a seam on that face and we will mark a seam on that face and if we unwrap it will be a disaster right now because we have not cut our main seam. So then we need to cut our seams like so. Control E, mark seam, and unwrap. And actually, if you want to know a neat trick for unwrapping, let me go ahead and delete these seams. You can go down here under the mesh options and change edge select mode to tag seam and live unwrap. So then if we go ahead and preview this, we can hold control while we're selecting edges and it will select the fastest path and it will automatically unwrap if you watch over there in the UV editor which is quite a neat feature. It makes unwrapping very easy, especially for organic objects. So, our candy can So, anyway, our candy cane UVs, I'm sorry about that, I just got a critical disc warning from Camtasia, which I'm recording with, so that's interesting. Anyway, our UVs are not even right now, so we'll get sort of weird distortion if we apply the candy cane text right now, and I can show you that we go to rendered mode and apply the candy cane texture actually it looks pretty good um, we're gonna work on making it seamless here in a second so don't worry about that and our ends are also we're not going to worry that much about because what we can do is scale these oh I need to turn that off Scale these down. Like so. And then we can take the squares and scale them down and then try to place them on an area that is white so it looks a bit more natural. Like that. And we can even do the same thing on the other end, which already looks pretty decent. I'm not going to worry too much about that. However, before we scale these down, what we want to do is start straightening out the UVs, and we'll get better results that way. So scale Y0, scale Y0, scale Y0, SY0, 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 SY0. What I'm doing with SY0 is scaling these down to the Y axis to 0 and that will even everything up nice and neat like so. Then now that we have our texture working we have to find where the seams don't quite match up and how you fix that 
is you just take one end and drag it up on the y-axis until these things match up like so. And now from a distance or not even that far away, it looks seamless. Then to that that is basically the tutorial. That is how you texture a candy cane in Blender. You UV unwrap it and you use the texturing methods that I showed you right here. But we want a slightly more realistic candy cane. So let's go ahead and create an environment. And by environment, I mean one single plane. And let's add some properties to our candy cane. So candy canes are reflective. So we can go ahead and mix shaders with a glossy, like so. And now it's reflecting our environment. And candy canes are pretty hard, so let's put this down to 0 0.05, maybe 0 0.1 to get it a little bit soft. And then we really only want this to be reflective around the edges. They call it a Fresnel effect. And you get that by input layer weight. And then you can either use facing or Fresnel. I like facing. It's generally more aesthetically pleasing than the Fresnel effect. And right now it's hard to tell that it's reflective because it's only reflecting gray. So I am personally going to pause the video and go find a sky texture. Okay, this is a free sky from the CG Skies website. You can download trials of their sky as long as you're not using them for commercial purposes, which I am not. I'm using them to teach. And you can see that this candy cane is, as a matter of fact, reflective. It is sort of reflecting the sky. So we also want to make our candy cane a little bit translucent because candy canes are also translucent. They are not perfectly opaque. And you do that with a mix shader. Actually, not a mix shader. That is incorrect. Do not listen to those past few seconds of this video. Mix shader is wrong. So we actually need to take this and an add shader. And we can add in some translucence. One uh, value of one will be too much. And there is no value for how much it adds on the add shader. And that's because it's really based on the darkness. So we want this to actually be a little bit red or pink, kind of which we can do by playing with the colors, and then we can darken it. And that way, it's hard to tell right now, um, but if we mute this, you can see some light starting to penetrate it, and it's especially visible if you take something like this, put it behind the candy cane, like so, and turn it on as an emission at like maybe 200. So then you can see the light actually starting to bleed through the candy cane and it's not actually doing a very great job right now because my samples are so low but if I change my preview samples down to zero you will notice the light starting to bleed through the candy cane and that is exactly what we want. Like so. You can also use subsurface scattering with the candy cane instead of the translucence, but translucence is a bit less glitchy right now in Blender, and subsurface, subsurface scattering is great, don't get me wrong, but it also seems to take longer. Uh, turning off no caustics will prevent a lot of the fireflies on the ground, and filtering the gloss will also prevent some of that in the render settings. Anyway, you get the point. The main point of the tutorial was learning how to use the brick texture to make stripes on your candy cane and how to make the stripes wrap properly around the candy cane. And I think I covered that part of the tutorial pretty well. So hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. Hopefully I taught you some neat new tricks. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe for a new tutorial every Tuesday. That was a quickie. And... That was fun. Now you know how to procedurally texture a candy cane in Blender. That will be all, ladies and gentlemen.